All right, so we're now on to part two in this Webpack series. Where we left off is that we had a source and dist folder here that we're compiling um, H, uh, JavaScript and CSS. Uh, the CSS had uh, Tailwind in it and it uh, remained unminified. And then the JavaScript uh, was just a couple little lines that we wrote and uh, it was uh, unminified as well. So it's obvious that this is fine in a development environment. There's no reason that we necessarily need to make it minified or anything like that, but we would in a production environment. So we're going to create a workflow for ourselves where we can have unminified things in development so it's easier to debug and then minified things uh, when we are in a production environment. Uh, on top of that, we are also going to be purging out any unused CSS. Um, Tailwind is inherently bloated and it's, it's that way by design. Um, it, it expects you to remove all of the CSS classes that you're not using. So we're gonna go over how to do that in this environment. And then lastly, we're gonna go over how to optimize your images in Webpack. So we're gonna have an images folder in our source folder and it's gonna copy the images over to our dist folder optimized. So if you are new to the channel, uh, make sure to subscribe. Um, I do videos on web development and WordPress just about every week. So uh, if you haven't, if you've stumbled upon this video and haven't watched the first one, the link is above right now. But all right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's uh, first jump into getting a production config and a development config. And so the way that I like to go about this is I like to end up having three Webpack config files. And it may kind of seem ridiculous, but when you kind of see where I'm going with it, it's gonna make a lot of sense. So what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of have the production config the development config, but then we're gonna have a third one that's gonna be kind of the common things between the, between the two. So like in a production environment, we're gonna to wanna to extract our CSS to the DOM. We're gonna to want to uh, use post CSS. We're gonna to wanna to do all those things. And obviously we're also going to want to uh, compile our JavaScript in, in, the, in uh, under normal fashion, just minified. So there's no reason for us to copy and paste this and just maintain two separate files because then when you uh, uh, want to add something to one, you have to add it to the other and that can become a hassle. So let's do something real quick. We're going to take uh, this file and let's actually just copy and paste it a few times, twice to be exact. And we're going to rename uh, these two prod and dev. And with that in mind, let's also change this to dot common dot JS. And so common is referring to what is common between dev and production. So what we can do here now in dev is let's just get rid of everything except for mode is equal is be is being set to the development. And let's do the same thing for production. And let's remove the imports and change this to production. All right, so with that, we now have three files, but they're not really talking to each other in any way. They're all very separate. So what we're going to do is we're going to install a new package. And this package is going to allow us to um, merge uh, the common file with dev when we call dev and merge common with production when we call production. So we're going to do npm install dash dash or dash capital D uh, webpack dash merge. And this is a very handy tool that's going to let us uh, combine these uh, these objects together in a way that will still work. So when we are in production, let's do const merge and this is going to have to be within brackets here, is equal to require webpack merge. And so when we have this export, we're going to do merge. That's going to be a function. We're going to bring in common 
and we're going to bring in, you can hear my phone's telling me it's bedtime, but here we are. And then we're going to const um, common is equal to require webpack config common. So you, hopefully you can kind of see what's happening here. We're importing common and we're merging common with this object that we have here in production. Let's do the same thing over in uh, dev. And you know what, let's just make this easier and just change this to development. And here we are. Um, and so what we can try with this is we are going to uh, update our package.json because now start is not going to just want to call this file that doesn't exist anymore. We're going to want to call the dev version. And let's create another one called build. And we're going to have this call the production version. So if we were to do npm run start, what we should expect is uh, exactly what we have currently, was we're gonna have a dist folder here with unminified CSS and unminified JavaScript. Now, if we do npm run build, it's gonna call that other config file. And what we should see is something a little bit different once it finishes. Um, so let's uh, open this up in uh, JavaScript. And actually we don't have um, CSS that's minifying. So why is that? We have JavaScript that's minifying, but we don't have CSS. So uh, by default, just because you set the flag to production, it's not going to know how to handle CSS minification. So we have to tell it how to do that. So let's go over to our production and um, let's do a couple things here. So first and foremost is uh, we need to add a new item to this object and it's gonna be called optimization. And so optimization um, has a couple things in here, but we're only gonna really touch one. Um, and it's gonna be, um, a, it has an object and it's gonna be a minimizer. And that minimizer is going to be an array. So what we can do is we have um, a plugin that we can now use um, that well, we, we can't use it now we have to install it first and it's called optimize CSS assets webpack plugin it's a mouthful so we're gonna do npm you know, let's kind of clear this up so we're back to the top npm install dash D optimize CSS assets webpack plugin say that three times fast so with this this is actually going to um, allow us to pass this into this minimizer array. And so when uh, um, it encounters a CSS file throughout the process, it's going to minimize it for us. So all we have to do is, um, let me just copy this so I don't mess up typing it out, is we require optimize CSS assets plugin, assign it to this variable, and then use the class um, and new it up right here. Uh, so let's uh, take and uh, a look at this and, and uh, see how it outputs. Now remember, we have a CSS file that is not minified and we have a JavaScript file that is. So you would think that when we run this, we will have both minified files, but let me show you something. npm run build, let's close out of this. And once it is finished building, we will check to make sure that what we expect is going to happen to happen. All right, looks like it built. So now we have our CSS file and happy day. It is minified just like we expect. However, if we click on main.bundle.js, it is now back to not being minified. And so why is that? Well, when you declare the optimization um, object in the minimizer um, array inside of it, you are effectively overriding what uh, Webpack is doing in the background. So in the background, uh, the Webpack is, is minimizing the JavaScript for us simply because we are in production mode. However, we have now taken over that functionality and said only optimize the CSS. So what we, what we can do is uh, we can re 
introduce what Webpack was already doing behind the scenes without installing another uh, uh, NPM package. It's in fact, it's already in there and it's a Terser Webpack plugin. And so I'm just going to, uh, without running NPM install, I am going to just uh, um, assign Terser plugin um, and require the Terser Webpack plugin package here. So what we can do with that is just inside of this array is run new Terser plugin. Terser is uh, something that minifies JavaScript. So if we cancel this and clear it, we can now run build. And when this is done, we should have two files that are both minified. So let's take a look at main CSS and now main bundle. All right. So that's great. That's perfect for what we need for production. However, we have uh, something going on down here that we don't want is that we are watching the files. You don't want to be watching your CSS and JavaScript files on production. So let's go back to common and let's remove uh, watch. Now we can run it again and it shouldn't be watching those things anymore. However, now if we were to run npm run start, it would be running our development build and that development build would no longer be watching. So let's move that over to dev. So we can see down here that uh, it is no longer watching and that's exactly what we want. So let's go back to uh, development mode and all we're going to do is do watch is true. And believe it or not, that's all we're doing with this. Uh, development mode is pretty much what we have in common um, JS here. So with that in mind, we are well on our way. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to be able to remove a lot of this uh, of this um this bloat that we have in here it's 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 kind of crashing my my vs code here when i try and open up this main css file uh we we have over a megabyte in there um if we run start here it should uh actually won't yell at us when we're in uh, development mode but it's uh quite large it's uh 1.79 megabytes you can see right here um, so what we need to do, and this is more just a tailwind thing, less about Webpack. So feel free to skip a little bit if you're not interested in that. Um, but what we can do is when we are in uh, production mode, we can tell tailwind to purge out everything that we don't like. Um, and so let's uh, create a new file here called tailwind config js and so we're gonna it's just gonna start just like a webpack config do module dot exports and it's gonna be equal to an object and the very first thing that we're going to do here is set the purge array I guess it's an array here and then uh, we need to tell it what to look for um, because what it's doing behind the scenes is it's running a regular expression and it's going to be looking for class names. So if you can find, if it can find a class name in there, it won't purge it out of the CSS file. So for example, if we tell it to uh, look for our PHP files, it's going to come across this div and it's going to find this max WSM rounded overflow hidden and shadow LG, and it will leave those alone inside of the CSS file and remove everything else that doesn't exist inside of here. So we're going to exclude a couple things. Um, the first is dot slash uh, star star anything dot PHP. So any sort of PHP file from here all the way down in whatever folder, um, look for those classes. And just for like good measure, even though I'm not really going to uh, show it off or anything, we're just gonna make sure that 
anything in our JavaScript that we may be adding classes or anything like that also get caught. So make sure if you are, you know, injecting classes into the DOM with JavaScript or you have, you know, other template files like twig files or PHP files or anything like that, that they are accounted for in this purge array. So let's take uh, that for a second and then let's uh, cancel out of it. And the other thing that we have to do is we have to tell Webpack that we are in production mode. Because if we were to just run npm run build and let it go, it's actually going to just do what it did before and we're going to have a giant CSS file that's almost two megs. So what we have to do is we have to modify our package.json and the build finish. So let's just double check here. Yeah, our, our, our file is still enormous. So let's go into our package.json and let's modify our build command. And so what we're going to do is before we run Webpack, we're going to set the node environment. And that's going to be equal to production. And so uh, Tailwind will understand that what's going on here. And so when uh, they see that it is in production mode, they will purge out anything that we are not using. So npm run build again. And it should now see that we are in production mode and it can, oh, you can see right here. Isn't that great? It took it from, from almost two megs to uh, just over four kilobytes. So if we were to open this up, it's now a much more manageable uh, CSS file. So let's uh, just verify that this works. Let's just, oh, take this text XL class and just make sure that it's in here just to make sure we're not uh, kidding ourselves. And there's text Excel, and it's got what we need. Um, let's one more for good measure, text gray 700. Yep, and it's right down here. So obviously everything that we need in here is here. So great, now we have a production mode that we can run and it will minify our CSS, minify our JavaScript and purge out any unused Tailwind classes. So the last thing that I wanna go over is actually getting images uh, to become optimized. Now, in the context that I'm working in and now with WordPress, we're not necessarily trying to load in um, images into our Webpack bundle. We just simply need something that's going to take a folder of images, um, minimize them and, and reduce any of the meta information that we don't need and then put it in our distribution folder. That's all we're gonna accomplish here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need to have um, this inside of our common, uh, um, common config. So let's go into our common config. Uh, let's close others. Oops, I closed out the wrong one. Common config. And so, it's actually took me a little while to kind of figure this out originally when I started working with Webpack because I didn't understand that when you use their file loaders and things like that, that it was just putting it in the bundle for to become available there. So I came across a plugin that we are going to use and um, it's going to require us to install three packages because of the way that we're doing this. Um, so let's clear this out. And we need to install um, npm install dash d. We're going to install the image min webpack plugin. We're going to also install, uh, um, oh, sorry, not three, just two. And then the glob plugin, because we are going to be giving it a uh, glob to uh, find all of our images. Um, so my apologies, there's just the two. And once these install, we, it's going to give us a plugin that we can then throw into our plugins array and uh, minimize our images. So let's uh, start by just assuming that this all gets uh, installed correctly. And so what we first would need to do is we need to add this, okay, it's installed. 
um, is declare our um, plugin up here. So it's called imageMin, imageMin Webpack plugin. And then we need to do dot default at the end. And then on top of that, we are going to require glob. And so in our plugins array, we can now um, uh, instantiate the plugin. So we're going to have a new, let's see, new image, uh, image min plugin. Hopefully it doesn't bother you guys too much that I'm looking off screen. I just want to make sure that I'm not running into a bunch of mistakes here. Um, and like I said, we're kind of just doing this outside of the Webpack um, bundle itself. We just need it to perform a task for us. And so inside of this ImageMin plugin, it lets us do something called external images. So it has an object that we can then uh, give it a few um, uh, keys and let it know where our images are. So we're first, we're gonna give it a context of where we are even at in our file system. And so we just wanna say, start from where we are in this moment. And we are going to give it a destination of where we want our images to end up. And we are also saying how we want our files, file names to exist when they are in that destination folder. So these are placeholders that uh, mean something that when Webpack goes through them, it will actually take the name and it will actually take the extension and place them in these spots that we're telling it to. And so kind of the, the difficult, the, or the I guess the lengthiest um, part of this and the most important is actually telling it where to look for our images. So we have a sources um, uh, key here and it's gonna be glob.sync. So we wanna synchronously look through a folder. And so we are going to look in assets, source, and then we're going to create an images folder. We haven't done that yet, but then we're going to say anything, any infinite amount of folders deep, look for anything dot, and then we can open up these brackets and do PNG, JPEG, um, the other JPEG, GIF, and SVG. Um, and it will look for all of those and it will run them through the minification process and then spit them out in assets, dist images. So let's uh, first create that images folder here. And let's just take a screenshot of my code, get a nice nasty image here. And then what we can do is let's reveal in finder here. Let's go to desktop. Let's copy this image and paste it right inside of there. So now we have an image that is 152 kilobytes and there's no reason that it needs to be that big. So let's run it through our um, minification process. So let's do npm run build and cross our fingers that everything worked. And so what we should see is we should see a, uh, an image folder pop up in there, which we do. And we now have an exact copy of the image um, and its name and everything like that. Let's reveal in the finder here just to see that it is now 95 uh, kilobytes instead of I know I just saw this, but I forgot it already, 152. So a nice little uh, boost there. So, and it, you get it for free. You, anytime you drop an image here and you run your build, um, it will minify your images for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a like if you learned something, leave me a comment, let me know if there's a better way about going, uh, going about this. Um, I, covered um, getting our configurations into a dev and production environment configuration file. Um, we have a common file between the two that makes it easier to update things. We got Tailwind to purge out any unused CSS. Everything's now being minified according to our config. 
And then finally, we got images to um, have their file size reduced. So um, again, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, I'd like to thank my patrons. Uh, we are going to get our next exclusive video this week. Um, so if you aren't a patron already um, and you're interested in learning more about this kind of stuff, um, we're focusing on WordPress um, right now, but uh, leave a suggestion in there and uh, you know we'll definitely consider it. But thanks again for watching. I appreciate the support and I will see you in the next one. Yeah.